Ai. American media editor, I currently serve in Nasarawa State at the HIV and Cancer Unit of the General Hospital. And I also belong to Yoruba Wikimedia Fan Club. I review books and I volunteer to productive things going on in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ida. Um, Mr. Kambai, I'm sorry if I do not pronounce your name correctly, but Mr. Kambai, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, you pronounced it very well. <laughs> so, uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Kambai Oko. I I am from Central Nigeria, from the Middle Belt of Nigeria, and um, I am a Wikimedian, and I contribute on Wikimedia English. I also contribute on Wikimedia tier projects, and. Um, um, I also contribute on other Wikimedia projects, um, different from Wikipedia, you know, Wikivoyage, Wikidata, and all those um, sister projects of Wikimedia. So I'm very happy to be here. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kambang. Can you please introduce yourself, Mom? Hi. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, good afternoon. My name is Anne. I'm from the southeastern part of Nigeria. And um, I volunteer. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Onike Juliet Izuchi. I'm from the southeastern part of Nigeria. And um, I'm from I volunteer and contribute to the Igbo media user group. I contribute in Igbo language. Um, I work with Samsung um, and um, I'm just a first graduate. I finished studying some time last year, late last year. So that's it for me. And then um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Ms. Juliet. Thank you for um, joining us as well. Mr. Cedric, are you with us now? Cedric. Mr. Cedric. Yes, I'm there. Oh, okay. Please, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, sir? Uh, I'm a Wikimedian uh, residing in Rwanda. Mostly, I do participate. Built on uh, Wiki Voyage and uh, some other sister projects. forward to be gaining more for this webinar. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Shedrick. Okay, before we go into um what we have to do today, I would also like my colleagues on this call to um go ahead and introduce themselves as well. So um, Mr. Isaac, please can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Isaac. Um, I'm the executive director of Finance Africa, and it's so nice to have everyone here. Um, I really look forward to learning from the conversations that we'll be having today and the inspiration that will be going on from there afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Isaac. Um, Mr. Alafia, please, can you go ahead to introduce yourself? Okay, I don't think he's he can hear me. Um, 
Busola, please, can you go ahead to introduce yourself? Thank okay. you. Um, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Olu Busola Flabi, and I'm the Gram Associate here at Finoid Africa. And I'm glad to be here. I look forward to learning from your stories and your journeys as Wikimedian editors. And I really hope I have a lot to take back with me at the end of this webinar. Thank you. Oh, all right. So, Mr. Thank you so much, Sola. So, Mr. Lafia cannot um speak where he is. So, um, I would go over the um the rules I said before people more people came to join the call. So, um, the housekeeping rules is that if you have questions, um, you would have to wait to the end of the webinar, and so that you do not forget, or if you have burning questions, just use the chat box, just use the chat box and type in your questions there. So once again, thank you everyone for joining this call and thank you so much for our speakers who are honoring this call. So like I said, the theme for our webinar this month is success stories, young digital creators thriving with open licensing. Um, so I'll be asking our speakers um, a few questions and I would um, like them to give um, elaborate answers because we are looking forward to you know hearing your success stories of how you have been thriving in the open movement and also learn from you as well. So um, I would like to start with Miss um, Toida. So Miss Toida, I'd like to ask you what inspired you to join the open movement. What inspired you to join Wikimedia? Thank you for that question. I was not actually, I don't know how to put it, because the thing is that my brother, who happened to be uh, the current uh, vice president of uh, the Union Wikimedia platform, has been talking to me about this particular Wikipedia that all you just need to do is editing, then he, 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 he kind of, he has been trying to bring me into Wikipedia, but I do a bit of that. What are they doing to waste my time? Same thing with other people that are Wikipedians uh, around me in Unilorn. They, they were like, Tawida, you, you are very active and you are passionate with whatever you are doing. It would be good for you to bring this passion into Wikipedia, but I do a bit of, but the... What I can say inspired me at first was that I just wanted to know what is it about because the way they were telling me then, I don't really understand. They were just like, you put one article, you edit. So I, I because one thing about me and it has, it has worked for me several times is that I need to know what that thing is all about before I can probably put my passion and energy in, into it. So there was this time my brother told me that they are doing this training, at least since you've been telling us that you want to know how this thing works, just come for the training. And truthfully, I went there, I saw a lot of people, they were editing and I was taught how to create accounts, how to edit. So I, I, do, I didn't really have an inspiration for joining a Wikipedia at first. I just wanted to explore because one thing about me is that most, of, in fact, most of these projects and contests, too, the major reason why I've been joining them is to just explore. But as time goes on, the inspiration came because I start seeing a lot of things that I, I am not aware of before. So I, I just feel like this, this thing is, is for me. So let me just continue editing and creating articles as much as possible. So that is just my story. I don't really have any inspiration at first, but as time goes on, the inspiration came to keep editing, to keep creating, to keep doing whatever I can for the Wikimedia projects. All right, thank you, Ms. Julia. Thank you very much. So she said that um, she did not really have any ex um, inspiration, but then out of curiosity, uh, she decided to explore and she, her journey started from the Wikimedia, um, Unilever Wikimedia Club. Thank you so much. So, um, 
our next speaker, Mr. Kambai, I would like to also ask you the same question. What inspired you to join the open movement? What inspired you to what inspired you to join Wikimedia? Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, I didn't have an idea about what I was even doing. <laughs> I didn't even know anything like Wikimedia or Wikipedia. All I wanted to do was to edit article, I mean, edit the article on my my particular ethnic group, that's the Atia people. I was just like uh, exploring the Google website and um, I was just like searching what is even written about these people. And so I stumbled on this very article on the Atia people. And when I saw what was written, I wanted to actually improve on it. So that was how I I started working on that very article. Um, it it I wasn't really consistent about it, but um, with time, about about uh, 2020 or 2019, 2020, that was when I was able to actually because I didn't have uh, a smartphone. Then when I started editing, I was using a Java phone. So in 2020 or 2018, when I got a smartphone. I began to see the bigger picture, how the website actually looks on smartphone. And I decided to like um, edit more on the Atia people and then <clears throat> on the Tiap language also. So um, with time, I was like, okay, if I can edit on the Atia people, I can edit on Tiap language. What about where they live? Um, so I decided to start editing on the Southern Kaduna area. Then there was two articles on the Southern Kaduna area. It was just Kaduna State and then local governments of uh, um, Kaduna State. So I began to improve articles on the local governments of Kaduna State, of Southern Kaduna uh, area. And then later on, began to create articles on ethnic groups around the Southern Kaduna area because I found out that those, that region of Nigeria is highly underrepresented. So uh, we have articles about uh, other parts of Nigeria, but that very part they are not represented online. So why is it that the people don't have information about them. So those people, all I want to do is to increase. I didn't really understand even what Wikimedia was all about, but with time as I did, I look at what has already been created elsewhere um, in the English Wikipedia, and then I try to replicate what uh, is written there. Sometimes my articles get deleted, and I don't know why they delete it, but I just keep on you know, doing my thing, and. With time, I was able to really understand what Wikimedia was all about. All right, thank you. December so much. 2020. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm still talking. Sorry, you can go ahead. I think your network is breaking, Mr. Kambai. But if you still want to go ahead, you can go ahead. Okay, 20, and that's during, um, during the lockdown. But can you hear me now? All right, all right. Um, so uh, in 2020, that was when I, I was uh, able to join the very first um, global meeting of Wikimedia Foundation. And then I was able to actually understand uh, what the foundation was all about. And then I actually began to edit with my own you know, awareness of what I was doing. And that was just what informed me. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kambrai. Um, your story was very interesting to listen to, um, especially with the fact that you um started from trying to improve um articles that are relating to your tribe or like native relating to your dialects and you also moving from there to trying to remove um, improve other articles 
other northern, you know, trying to give the northern part of Nigeria a um, visibility. Okay, um, thank you so much, Mr. Kambai. So, moving Sorry. on. Mm. Well, so um, there's a difference between uh, Northern Nigeria and Middle Belt Nigeria. So um, my articles are mainly on Middle Belt Nigeria, that's Central Nigeria, not oh. Northern Nigeria. Oh, okay, sorry for the mistake. Middle yeah. Belt Nigeria. Thank you for um, giving them visibility as well. So um, thank you, Mr. Kambai. Moving on to the next um, speaker that we have, Mr. Mr. Cedric, please, uh, I'd, I'd ask you the same question as well. What inspired you to join the movement? What inspired you to join Wikimedia? The open event. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, actually, my journey in joining Wikimedia started uh, during the Wikimania 2022. Their community user group Randa and one of my friends invited me to join the event. And after joining the event, I got the chance to get to know what Wikimedia is and what Wiki, what Wikipedia is. And as the one who has uh, the the culture and the history of my family, that I was really feeling that I I really have to preserve it. Uh, my the history of my family regarding beings, descendants, and all those stuffs. I felt like this is where I have to belong, where I will be sharing the knowledge and as well documenting the history of my family so that it will be preserved and also be shared throughout through the generations. And during that Wikimania, uh, we had a chance to do a learn and I get to interact with the Wikipedia visual editing and some of the uh, these syntax by editing the markup language. So far, I found it interesting, uh, and that's when I started my journey by contributing, and as well throughout leading and what in what's what Wikimedia has, uh, I got to I got the chance to be reviewing all the viewing the those of the requires uh, my input so that we can be sharing the knowledge accordingly, and as we believe that uh, when everyone knowledge. It is real true path to get to the success. So that's what really make me be interested in contributing to it. So far, that's how I joined the Wikimedia Foundation, the Wikimedia movement. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Cedric. Um interest interesting story right there. Um your journey started from Wikimania and your inspiration also sprouted from you. Um, trying to preserve your cultural heritage, which is very awesome, very awesome. So um, the last speaker, um, which is um, Ms. Juliet, I would like to also ask you the same question. What inspired you to join the Open Movement? What inspired you to join Wikimedia? Well, um, I've been using Wikipedia over the years. Like um, so during my assignment, I just open a particular topic, extract the words I have to extract, and then work with them in my assignment. Then, at some point last year, when when I was serving in the lobby, a friend of mine met me and asked me, actually, like this platform that I joined, that um is really contributing to Wikipedia. Over time, I really I was thinking that Wikipedia is um. And it's so encyclopedia that the uh, contributions we are coming actually from uh, machines and the rest of them, not actually human beings. Because I've tried to really um, explore this space, but um, I guess I didn't have the required knowledge to uh, find my way around. But um, when she told me I was um, interested to go get to know more about um, Wikipedia, but meanwhile, we started with uh, Wiki Commons. That in terms of in terms of picture videos and the rest of them, she first come, came to me with um, the question of cultural images yeah, and the rest of them. I was kind of ah, the image that at, um, the, the traditional wedding that I tra attended a week before the day she asked them, um, the pictures is no longer with me. I've uh, I've really deleted them. She was like peace and I started asking me. I was not asking her what are you what are you going to use those pictures for. 
So when she told me, I was really interested to as well contribute because I'm still I was contributing with them. Um, Google guide. I was a Google guide then contributing my own quota of pictures and the rest of it. So that was how I now started, and she introduced me to the Igbo user group, and then to Nigeria Wikimedia user group. So I started learning, and sometimes I navigate my ways, and then I met mistakes, which um at at some point got me a block tag. But even at that, I did not relent. I I said, okay, since I've gotten both in English, Wikipedia, and out of my own negligence, I think I'll have to still keep contributing in my own community. So I decided now to contribute in the Wikipedia community. And I've been doing this a lot of times, and uh, I, I, I think I, I'm kind of enjoying contributing to my community, and as well as there is a way to contribute to other communities as well. I'll still be delighted to because I've come to enjoy it. That's it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Juliet. So uh, moving on, because of time, um, I'd like us to be brief about our answers. So so um, moving on to the next question. In one minute, I would want one minute or more. Yeah, I would like our speakers to um share a specific project or a specific project they worked on or a or an experience that fueled their desire to you know remain like some of you said um you just a friend told you um your brother you were using you know some of you just came across it like that and like what um what fueled you to remain in the open movement, what forward you to remain in Wikimedia? What forward you to continue to contribute to um, Wikimedia? And also, I would also want you guys to share your experiences of some of the contests you have participated in. So this is a two in one question. The first question is, you know, share um, the specific projects or like a particular experience you had that fueled your desire in remaining in the Wikimedia space, in, in remaining an editor. And the second question um, is also that you quickly share, briefly share um, one or two of your experiences as a participant in you know, some of the con contests you have participated in, maybe the ones you won, the ones you did not win, but then it just stood out for you. So um, I hope you were able to get my questions. Um, so I'll be starting with um, Mr. Cedric. So Mr. Cedric, in briefly, yeah, I would want you to share a specific project or experience that fueled your desire to remain because you said you um, came across the movement when you went for Wikimania. So what fueled your desire to remain as a, an editor for the Wikimedia for the Wikimedia movement? And the second question is to briefly share your experience um, with some of the contests you have participated in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, yeah. by briefing, that made me remain here in the media movement. Yes. It is because uh, during uh, the time that I'm contributing, I really found myself on a growth because I do get some of the opportunities to be in, uh, like, especially I, I can mention, like, we do have networking so that I can enlarge my net, my network so that I can have to know with anyone with the experience whom I, as well by contributing to the media, I, uh, I have enlisted my research so that's 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 one that made me really the main contributing and by contributed on um i'll be starting on wiki gap 2023 in rwanda um i joined uh one as a fifth participant and i have contributed and not only contributing but contest that is urban wetland protection and advocacy campaign 2023 here in Rwanda and it 
and also I have participated on uh, a contest in that is in here in Rwanda that is called Le Mois de la uh, and as well I have organized Wiki for Human Rights 2023 in Rwanda meetup too and as well I have contributed on uh, Wiki Voyage celebration of is the a campaign for recognizing random heroes that is called Heroes Day campaign Rwanda 2023 the Explore Africa contest where I successfully saved the spot where I was a second winner it campaign 2022 in Rwanda and I won as a second participant Culture, cultural diplomacy math and also I have also and as well um, currently I'm in jury of uh, wiki loves monument Ukraine participated into and as well I have been a part of a research for the event page Mr. Cedric, we can't hear you anymore. Yes, actually, uh, was what I spoke, Ari. Um, I think he has network issues. Colin Free, are you listening to me? Are you getting me? Oh, yes, I am, but you are breaking and we cannot hear you clearly. Oh. Yeah, so, but the yeah, last... Yeah, to... Okay, you can continue. The, the, well, actually, when the last did you get me all, may I start briefing it, what I, what I was passing mm -hmm. on? I don't start from don't start again. I think the last um the last thing I heard you say was a contest you organized um in in Rwanda and you're trying to like share your experience. You're trying to list other contests that you have also participated in as well. Okay, I think it's Wiki for Human Rights 2023. Uh, we have organized, it took place in uh, Feb, on 10th of the Feb of uh, March. So uh, it quite gave a great number of... Con of con we retained them to remain as the active contributors to Wikipedia and... Um, I have contributed to Afrosound Meetup too, and I have sorry, and I have also organized a campaign here in Rwanda that is called Heroes Day. Was also part of uh, the participants of the Explore Africa contest. Yeah, I served a spot as a second winner. Um, I have also participated in Africa Youth Month 2022 in Rwanda. And that's Youth Day. I told you that I I have participated in the Ukrainian uh, Cultural Diplomacy Month, part of the junior jury team of Wiki Loves Africa and Kalintri. I am serving as a so yeah, thank you very much. I think that's all. 
Oh, thank you so much. I was about to also tell you to um, wrap up. Um, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And I can see that you're a very active um, editor in this space. So moving on to our next speaker, that would be Ms. Doida. Um, can you please um, share the same question? Can you please share a specific project or an experience that foiled you briefly, please, because of time, that um, foiled your desire to remain in the open moment and also share your experiences of some um, of some contests you have participated in. Um, please do not list um, the contests you have participated in, but just your experiences, an experience that stood out for you um, in one of the contests you have participated in. Thank you very much, Ms. Toida. Thank you. Like I always tell uh, people that scared to listen, one of the, I first started out by curating the article on a Wikipedia, what's it called, Wikipedia article. I've forgotten the name of the contest and I remember that it was that same day that article was deleted. And that was because there was no reference and I was still naive, so probably I just rushed into the contest without knowing what it was all about. At that particular moment, I almost wanted to give up on anything regarding the media, but I remember that I was told that there are other sisters' projects I can always participate in, so I actually anticipated for it. So it was a Nigeria cuisine. It was all about uh, using uh, wiki books to create uh, food in Nigeria. So I can say that particular contest, well, or should I say, um, inspired me to continue because I was happy that at least all the, I remember clearly that, except maybe one article that was deleted, that one said, I can still say it was because I was still kind of growing in the Wikimedia project. It was deleted because of a, a piracy. I, I I should have had a link to the original author of that particular uh, preparation of such food, but I didn't add it. So I think it was one. So knowing that out of like 11 or 12 articles I created on food, only one was deleted. It kind of inspired me that, okay, I think this Wikimedia project is for me. All I can just do is navigate on the ones that are, I am actually comfortable and I can feel confident in participating. At the end of that wiki book uh, contest, it was, I did not actually emerge as any of the winners. I remember that I was given the consolation prize winner. It was kind of, like, I don't know, it was kind of painful, but I feel like at least, I think this this thing is, I can always go in this particular one. So all that ones, they are the one that was actually organized by Free Knowledge Africa. The Explore Africa and the Afro Sports 2020, I can't remember the year. I think 2021 and 2022. I, I know I participated in uh, two year, two year. So regarding that, I remember that before before every contest, there is usually a training session. So I remember that the training session I joined was the, because it actually involved the indigenous language like Yoruba, Igbo, and also we were taught uh, how to edit uh, in Yoruba. So I remember that I feel like, okay, Tawida, since you don't know how to, this English Wikipedia is kind of getting difficult, if you create articles, they are usually very strict. It's not as maybe other language are not strict, but the actual fact is that I'm not a native language in English. So I feel like, let me learn this training session organized by the Free Knowledge Africa and then see if I, I can actually contribute in the Afro sports contest. So I remember that I, I I joined the training, I asked questions, and before I knew it, I started creating articles on Yoruba regarding uh, sports. Most especially, I, I focused majorly on women because I noticed that they are, they are, they, the knowledge about them on the 
Ricky Yoruba was actually very scarce. So one thing that stood out for me in that particular food sports contest was that I remember that after the contest, even before the uh, announcement of the results and all, the, Yorub, the president of the Yoruba Wikimedia reached out to me that, ah, we've been saying, you've been creating so much article on uh, Yoruba, so we'd like to add you on board. And that particular food sports contest actually stood out for me because it paved way for me to be among my um, indigenous language members. And I started participating in other contests. And another one I will actually mention before I round up is uh, the Explore Africa contest too. So is that one is about uh, because th these contests I mentioned they are different parts. The first one is the Nigeria Kusin. It has to do with wiki books. Then the second one is Yoruba, which is wiki Yoruba. Then this third one is Explore Africa, which is which is wiki voyage. So I have little or no knowledge about how wiki voyage works. But due to the Explore Africa contest organized by the Free Knowledge Africa, I joined the training. I learned how to the what's it called? How to create article on Wiki Voyage. And I remember that there were several links that were dropped in. So I do check those links. So that was one of the things that helped me out with this contest. I joined training session. I listen. If I don't understand, I try as much as possible to ask questions. So. The Explore Africa was all about uh, description, or should I say itinerary, because that was the actual part I, I want, the itinerary aspects, the description of the languages, the numbers, their market, how, for example, Yoruba is the market in Yoruba, the days, the weekend, they are holidays. So I was able to participate, and it actually paved way for me to, because I know how to actually create article on the on a what's it called on the on the wikimedia on the wikimedia project so and the last one is there she said she said nigeria that one i joined i was able to learn how to curate quotes so that particular one to pave way for other contests so we were just told to mention one or two contests. So that's all, I, that's all I can just say. And my experience generally, all I can just say is if there is any, maybe a newly existing, or should I say existing editor too, that at least want to contribute more on Wikimedia projects, what I'll just tell them is that they should not play with the training session. You should try as much as possible to ask questions, click on links, try as much as possible make because that that is what actually stood out for me in any contest i've been participating i tried my possible best i check link i go as far as going to youtube links to check how this thing works so that's what that's just my general experience about the uh wikimedia project it's just from one training to another mm -hmm. thank you very much and yeah, thank you so much to you have such a wonderful experience thank you so much for the um words of wisdom as well, the piece of advice. And, you know, Free Knowledge Africa had their proud moments. Mm -hmm. We have our, had, we have our proud, we had our proud moments as well that, you know, um, you were able to um, learn more about the sister projects from the links, um, the training videos and you attending trainings as well. So thank you so much, Tarika. I, I really enjoyed um, you speaking. So moving on to, our uh, next speaker, that will be um, Mr. Kambai. Mr. Kambai, same question. Please and um, please try as much as possible to be um, to be brief in um, in sharing your experience because of time. So the same question, I'll repeat it again. Can you share a specific project or experience that fueled your desire to remain in the open moment? Also, can you briefly share some of your experiences of the contest of the contest you have participated in. Um, please try as much as possible not to, you know, list a lot of, I'm sure that a lot of us have participated in so many contests. So try as much as possible not to list, but just, you know, pick one of them that stood out for you that, you know, that, that is very unique to you. So Mr. Kambai, please, can you go ahead? Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, of course, Mr. Kambai. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Um, actually, the long and short of it is that the desire to save my language from dying is what actually has been keeping me in this very movement. Now, Wikimedia Foundation has actually provide me, provided me with the platform to make that very possible. Now, in the year 2020, actually, when I attended the Wikimedia conference, I mean, the Wikimedia conference for the 2030 strategic, uh, I was when I discovered that <laughs> little <laughs> language, minority languages were actually having Wikipedia in Europe and Um, Mr. Kambai, I don't think we can hear you anymore. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, you can. Yeah. So, um, so um, the long and short of it, as I said before, was that the desire to actually save my language from dying has informed me to remain on Wikimedia contribution, um, uh, Wikimedia project, actually. So um, in 2030, during the um, 2030 strategic meeting, that was when I discovered that um, languages that are already dead are already having language, I mean, Wikipedias of, of their own, like Latin and uh, languages like even ancient Greek and all those languages in Europe. And we have little languages that are don't, do not have um, speakers as much as we have here in Africa and especially in our own area. They all have Wikipedia. So I was wondering, in Nigeria, we only have Hausa Igbo Yoruba Wikipedias. And uh, what happens to the other languages? Uh, are they not supposed to actually be developed or are they not um, um, good enough to have Wikipedia? So I applied for, um, for a Wikipedia and then uh, that's for TIAP language now. And then I started work on the translation project. And that was how um, we started getting community uh, volunteers to join into the project. So I discovered that the work is actually quite large and it's not something that you can just finish immediately. So it took us about two years, two years before we were able to um, get a Wikipedia of our own. And then also uh, uh, the competitions I have participated in, in in Wikimedia before I applied for the application for TIAP Wikipedia, um, where, I mean, the very first one has to do with the cinema um, of Africa, that's uh, writing articles about African actors, actresses, about movies. So that actually exposed me a lot um, about editing on Wikipedia. And then I also participated in you know, others. And then Wikivoage, um, editing which we had um, early this year or last year December that's the explore Africa uh, was actually my very first time of contributing on wiki voyage I never really knew anything about wiki voyage but because I had uh, some experience about editing on wiki books and on Wikipedia I just uh, it's just like a normal thing you know to me even though it was quite new I just learned about um, the fact that you don't actually need um, citations on Wiki Voyage, and you know I tried to follow the guide, and I was able to contribute to to opening or the creation of the Tiap Wiki uh, Tiap uh, Facebook on Wiki Voyage, and then contributed to other articles, and that has to do with uh, here in Nigeria, and uh, at the end of the day. Um, I emerged uh, tops during the competition. I didn't really um, go with the mind of actually competing. I just, I just wanted to create a, a Facebook that is of good standard and um, also to contribute articles on. I mean, to create articles about about um, what, what do you call it? Uh, parks, natural reserves, uh, nat uh, national reserves in, in Africa. And then later on, when I, you know, as the competition was going, that was when I actually had the interest of even, you know, making it like 
being a participant in the competition, but uh, that just came later on. And at the end of the day, um, uh, I came up, I came out, uh, you know, <laughs> among the top uh, participants. So um, even currently, what I do right now is about promoting the language. Um, Tiap language translation on the Wikipedia and on Wiktionary, and also recruiting new people who would actually carry on because if if um, it, it makes no sense if only one person or a few number of persons uh, do the editing and then other people are not learning. So the more we bring in more people, the more the sustainability on the long run. And so thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kamba. You have such an inspiring story. Um, how your desire um, sprouted from trying to preserve um cultural heritage and how you went on to create um a their yeah, wiki for wiki for your language, like Wikipedia for your language. That's very amazing. So um our last speaker, um Ms. Juliet, same question. Um, can you share a specific project or experience that followed your desire to remain in the open movement? Also briefly share your experience or some of the contests you have participated in. Again, I'm making emphasis on this again. Please do not um, go ahead to list all of the contests you have participated in, just one or two that stood out for you that is so unique to you. Thank you very much. Ms. Julia, please. Okay, um, well, for me, I realized that uh, by making a small contribution in one language, I could help improve access to language for others around the world. So, seeing firsthand how editing could cross language and cultural barriers, and then it was hugely motivating. So, since then, I remained involved in the media community because I find deep fulfillment in our shared mission. And then, my proudest experiences um, comes from um, initiatives like um, editathon in my hub, which is um, the Aval um, Media Hub, and then um, the ability to expand articles or especially my main, my main trigger is um, the feminist movement. So as people, we, as we had it and um, we are kind of um, involving ourselves in these little trainings and we got to know that um, there are no women or few women translated articles and uh, created articles in Wikipedia. So that uh, triggered me to actually remain in this movement to make sure that um, especially women articles or articles about women are usually translated and um, can be read in, in my own language as well. So, I helping give visibility to overlook stories and advancing inclusivity. So being seeing seeing inclus the inclusive nature of them, like including women and, and the rest of them in the media movement kept me continually engaged actually. So whether it's mentoring new editors, advocating advocating for content in undeserved languages or spreading awareness of the media in my community. So the work feels like um, it's meaningful. And then that collaborative spirit of Wikimedia volunteers, like um, the time I remember that I got blocked, I felt bad. I wanted to opt out, but um, I told them, I told the, our, I told people in my community, even the leaders, so they were kind of encouraging me that I can't be everywhere at the same time, that um, there are still spaces for me and other spaces as well that I can contribute that media is so large to embrace everybody, both photographers and people that like books, adding citations. So I can just engage myself in one place or the other and still get the desired results. So this um, collaboration and then um, together togetherness has um, been a contributing factor for me to remain in this um, movement. And then I can remember the few um, contests I engaged myself in, which is um, the Afro sport she did um, in my own community. I remember people did well. Even though I was not out for competition, I don't like competition, they sincere with it. But um, I actually tried in my own little corner to at least 
make the best out of it and contribute and contribute and contribute, even though I will not be going to check if I run or and the rest of it. Then at the end of the day, if I see myself or if I see myself being mentioned to be a winner or taking second places and third places, I'll be like, wow. So, so this little thing that I was really doing paid off. So that was that's when I will now decide, and that was where and then I decided I would continue adding and then contributing to Wikipedia. So in summary, seeing the real world impact of contributions and connecting with other Committed, committed to open knowledge, solidified my commitment to being a lifelong Wikipedia. So even though I'm not contributing yet, I, I'll still make out more time. I've not stopped, I'll still continue contributing. Uh -huh. So this experience showed me the immense good we can create through collaboration. So that this is all that I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Juliet. The thing I picked from what you said was um, giving you an opportunity to create impact and also collaboration, and you have decided to be a lifelong partner. So thank you so much um, to all our speakers and even our listeners for still staying with us as well. So moving on quickly, um, I would like to ask um, a question that has been, I'm sure that has been on most people's minds because some of you uh, mentioned that when you participate in contests, you sometimes you sometimes come up as being the first winner or at least being part of, of the winners that emerge. So I would like to ask that you elaborate on your motivation. Like what motivates you when you sign up for a contest? What motivates you to, you know, keep on researching, keep on creating articles, keep on like during the whole contest, what is your motivation? Because you know there are other other participate participants as well that sign up for the contest, but a lot of people give give up at like in the middle, like a lot of people just give up in the middle as but then you guys try as much as possible to see see it through the end, you know, you keep on contributing, keep on contributing to the contest end. So what is your motivation? What keeps you going when you sign up for contests and you emerge as a winner? Um, starting with um, Mr. Kambai. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, actually, as I said before, I didn't go into this very, like, uh, explore Africa with the mind of uh, competing. But when it reached a point, like when the time frame for the editing was uh, uh, increased to January, that was when I was, okay, now this is a competition and actually there's a price for it, right? Now, why not I try to measure? Then I look at the the data box, I mean, the outreach uh, dashboard, and I see like who are the top editors and um um what are they actually at, uh, creating about so i i look at that then i measure it with where i presently am and then i try to like um make a timetable for myself to actually reach um their level of editing because i know that definitely they will not be resting uh, they would want to actually create more and also come up come up tops so I try to like double my own work and, and you know, I don't really want to just like create an article for creation's sake and just dump it and go to create another one. I would want a quality product. And so I look at the articles that are already existing on in other parts of the world, like European articles or Asian articles. And I see like the standard or what I can be able to copy from their own areas and then uh, replicate it in my own, you know, uh, articles. So that was just practically what I did, just to be able to make my articles look qualitative and then be able to um, create as much articles that uh, as are required. Because I saw that for a top winner to emerge, you have to create at least uh, about 100 articles or be able to edit a about 150 articles and so i like what is the time frame remaining between today and the closing date and how many can i create 
to be able to reach that very point. And so I divide the number of articles, you know, according to, um, so I just generally set goals uh, on achieving it. And at the end of the day, it um, I emerged like among the top, top editors. So. Wow, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. Kambai. I'm sure that um, existing editors and even new editors would learn from your strategy of you know setting goals on how many create how many articles you'd like to create within the short um period of time. You also stated something that also like I picked was you know the pace of orders, you know, when you go and check the edit count of orders and see that okay, these guys are, you know, that these guys are moving fast. It also motivates you to You have a track record of, sorry, you have a track record of, um, sorry, you have a track record of winning, um, of winning several contests, right? So I would like to ask you to share your motivation, what motivates when you sign up for a particular contest or a particular editathon, what motivates you? What keeps you going to continue looking for? Um... What motivates you to continue looking for resources or continue editing to emerge as a winner? Mr. Tarita, please. Hey. Okay, I did not know that you were actually referring to me. The network kind of uh, went off. My motivation, the thing is that, like I said earlier, I do check this contest to know if it's for me or it's not for me. I have a lot of contests that, because just like we all know, each month we can have like three, four, five contests. So one thing that stood out for me is that I check myself very well to know if I'm capable for a contest or not. In fact, most times, most times, whenever a contest starts, so it depends on the on the what's it called on the duration actually. If it's just a month, I use at least a week to study what the contest is all about and see if it is something I can actually dive in. And this is what I do. After that one week, I go to I go to a particular article of the contest. I try to create it. Then once I see that I have enough information for that particular contest, I know that I'm good to go. And one thing that I've always realized about this contest is that consistency is consistency is what actually kept me going. And knowing the fact that I am contributing something that it, is, it will always be there. People will always get to see it outside Nigeria, Nigeria, everywhere across the world, everyone is saying it. So what I do is that it's just, it's just about consistency. Just like you said, as time goes on, people will surely give up along the line, like other participants. But it's, my own is just consistency. I can create a, an article a day, and the next day I may not create anything. The, the third day like this, I can create three articles. So I remember that at a certain point, I create five articles per day. And it's not as if maybe I don't have other things I'm doing. It's just that I set my time. Once I, once I don't feel like, and then another thing that is that once I don't feel like creating an article, I don't bother to do that. If particular, if part, part, if for example, it, this, Today now, maybe there is this contest I'm participating. I am not in the mood. I don't I don't have the words. I don't force myself into it. I just leave it. And I notice that once I give myself that rest, the next day I can create two, three, four, five articles in that particular day. Sometimes it can be two, two in the morning, 
then afternoon two, then before going to sleep, I'll create another one. So one thing that stood out for me for the contest is consistency. Most times, often than not, I don't even bother to check the dashboard to know who is creating their own, who is not. I know that once I'm consistent about whatever I'm going, irrespective of what they've created before, whether they've created five or I I tell people close to me whenever they see that I'm participating, how oh, why not go go and check the dashboard to know? I told them that one is one of my concern. Once I'm being focused on where I'm going, I know if I'm not the second position, I'll be the top winner. In fact, this early said the contest that I've been participating in for now, it has been I've been the top winner. And most times I I I don't I know it's, it's a competition, but I don't see it as a competition anymore. I see it as a way of just relaxing myself, having fun, knowing about a lot of people, knowing about women, knowing about notable women that they are still alive, some are, some are already dead. They have a significant contribution in their country. I remember said that there was this particular contest the, they, they do have lists of topic of article they do, uh, what is it called? The list for us to curate. I remember that that particular list, it exhausted. I went to find categories of these women in that particular uh, position. So I remember that there was this time that someone messaged me then that a, a fellow uh, was a participant like me now. This lady, how are you doing this thing? You will just create a particular, a particular article. Sometimes, for example, wiki coach, you will just create 12 quotes about this particular woman. Since we are not, I told the other particular person actually that time that me and you, we are in the same contest. You can't expect me to be giving out information for you. Maybe some other time. So if the person is here now, this is how I do it. I go to for the category, just click on maybe for example, female educators in Nigeria and Wikipedia. Like maybe you are going to your wiki quotes, it will bring out every female. Because one thing about this Wikipedia is that there is a way they they categorize this thing. So even if the list they gave you has already exhausted, just go to other ones. And if it is about Africa, you don't have to stay in Nigeria, you know, go as far as possible. I, I, if it, so far, the last there was this last one. Uh, African women educator, I was the top winner. And this is what I did. When I saw that the list is said, I was not even bothered about it. I just searched for it. Ghana women educator. It will bring you a lot of, it can bring you maybe, for example, scientist, a vice chancellor. Just go to, just go to Wikipedia again, vice chancellor in Ghana. It will bring you a lot of lists. Most times, I, I don't use the list they give. So it's, the, the only reason why I use it is maybe to just start that particular article and I I just and, and I think that is what worked for me. I go beyond the status quo they give on that mm. particular meta page. I go as far as just like I said earlier, I go as far as YouTube uh, YouTube pages. I'll use it to connect where the sources of these women are. I think to just round it up, I think what what's work out for me being the top winner of this contest is that Truly, is a competition, but I see it as a form. Most times when I do it, I, I feel so happy. I feel so eager. Whenever I search about, about a particular person, like, wow, so this woman, woman do it. Let me search for it again. There must be something more about this mm -hmm. woman. So I think that is what stood out for me. I see this project more, more than competition because I discovered that I go as far as possible. In fact, there are a lot of contests that the, the, I have this, this particular bookmark. I bookmark the list of this article I intend to create. I have a lot of contests that I don't even, I, I, I couldn't even exhaust them. So I think that is what I, that's the advice I can just give to other editors. See this project more like a contest. See it as, I don't know how to say it, like your personal project. Because mm. the fact about this thing is that once you create this article, your name will be on that net. Nobody can erase your name from that particular article. So see it as, see it more than a competition. Not that you just create a article, just give one reference. You are you are moving to another one. Me, I don't do that. I make sure 
for a particular article. I search, search, search. Every information about that person, I put it there and I go to another one. So what I can just tell the existing editor is that see this thing as your personal project. That way you won't just write just any article, dump it, go to another one. And before you know it, that particular top winner position was the call you are looking after. People, they will not, they don't have a choice. And it's not even about being biased or what's it called. Imagine you write a particular article, you write 20 articles, and maybe the second person writes 10 articles. They will not, so far your article is, that's why I will el elaborate on writing an accurate and a very good article. They will not go and give someone that writes uh, a 10 article. And another thing I would like to point out is that I remember that there was this particular time I, I participated in the Explore uh, Africa. The, sorry, the, sorry the, can you please wrap so, up now? What did you say? Like, can you please wrap up? Yeah. Okay, I will, I, I'm about to wrap up now. I just want mm -hmm. to emphasize on the fact that writing a accurate article, you will be able to track what you did. Even if you feel like, oh, this particular result, your name was not among and you tried your best, you can always reach out. I just want to point out the fact that there was this particular time I participated in the Explore Africa by, by the Free Knowledge and my name was not was it for I. I actually messaged two or three of the organizers. And I remember what stood out for me was I was be able to present something tangible. I created this, I created that. So what I can just mm -hmm. tell a uh, system editor is try as much as possible, create a accurate and at least something standard and yeah, look so beyond much. competition. Thank you very much. And thank you so much to Ida for that one. I'm sure that everybody here has um lens one or two check your capability before going to your cap yeah your capability before going to the contest um ensure that you are consistent and also try as much as possible to um go out like move out of the box go out of the box so thank you very much um to you i'm sure our listeners are taking notes and i'm sure they would apply it to themselves as well when they sign up for any contest so moving on to our next speaker um, that would be Miss Juliet. Same question. What is your motivation? Um, I'm sure that you have, you know, like you said when you were talking the last time that you have emerged as a top winner. Some of the editor tone you have engaged in. What is your motivation to remain consistent? Or like, what keeps you going to create more articles um, for that contest? Thank you, Miss Juliet. Miss Juliet, can are you on this call? Yes, I'm okay. here. Oh yeah, I was talking to you. You are the next person to speak, ma'am. Okay. Did you hear what? Yes, the motivating factor in terms of in terms of contributing. Yes, yeah. What, what, what keeps you going? Yes, that's the question. Okay. My motivating factor is um, actually research. Because the more I open uh, these okay, articles of the ones that I have to deal with or translate, the more I learn about these people and um, the more I get to know them better as well as uh, contribute better. So it's not really about um, the winning. Winning does not really motivate me, but um, what motivates me is what I will gain from this. So what I gain from this is um, this is um, I'm getting knowledge out of my own curiosity of knowing more, which is in the level of research. I I think is um, it's, it's enough motivation for me to be in this contest and, and my my continuous and. Um, willingness to edit as well as then uh, add more articles. I can remember really well in um, this actual sport concept about women that I participated in. I really don't know much about African um, women footballers or volleyball players or the rest of them. But 
when I opened the platform, I checked for Kenya women and saw that the majority of the articles have not been translated. I now check, started checking them out one after the other. I'll be like, wow, so this person is alive. And I'll go to their Facebook page or look for them in um, LinkedIn to see how they are actually doing. So on a long run, I got to know so many women athletes, women footballers, women volleyballers, and Later in future, I can as well be like, okay, we have many female African players in this field and they are doing really well. And I can as well mention their names of her. So this is a, a, my own motivation. And then this is how I actually put myself, and this is how I become more serious to contribute to this world. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Juliet. So, um, as we come to the end of um, today's webinar, I want each speaker to give their parting words to, um, in one minute, please be brief with it. Thank you very much. So try as much as possible to, because in one minute, I would cut you short. So try as much as possible to use one minute. So yeah, in one minute, um, I want our speakers to give their parting words to new editors or existing editors on this webinar. Um, Mr. Cedric, sir, can you please um, give your parting words, like encouragement to new editors or existing editors? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, my fellow editors, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, why we are or why we are contributing on this project, you have to take this as an opportunity of creating impact. And whenever you are creating impact, you are really serving, you are serving others. As we, we normally do while we are contributing, you are also gaining more than the one whom you are serving because you are conducting, make a real and clear impact. So far, this is a great way to go. So please, Feel free to always be. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. Ashiru. That was an awesome one there. Uh, moving on to our next um, speaker, Mr. Kambai, your parting words to um, existing edit editors and new editors on this call. In one minute, please. Yeah, thanks. So my parting advice would be that New editors, please, I beg you, try to learn from others like professionals outside of, within and outside of Africa. Try to make your articles as good as possible. Um, you know, make it look like um, it's a work done by a professional. And when people see it from outside, they would actually appreciate that very work. And always try to like, uh, uh, um, uh, like follow the rules that are required for that very wiki so that your articles don't get deleted. Um, so that's it. All right. Thank you so much for that um, amazing piece of encouragement. Um, Miss Miss Juliet, um, your parting words to existing editors and new editors. Okay, to new editors, I want you to know that your contributors, your contributions matter, no matter how small. There is also a friendly community ready to support you. Editing as well will become easier with practice. Start by editing those topics you know. Have patience with yourself and the editing process, and then most of all, have fun. Learning is his own reward. Then for the experienced editors, I, I will thank you for your dedication, and I also encourage you to stay curious Edit both and passionately too. Know that um, your ongoing contributions are appreciated. Share what inspires you about editing as well and take pride in what we can achieve through collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Juliet. Be patient, have fun. Okay. Thank you so much for that. So, um, so our last speaker, Ms. Um, Dorida, your parting words to I'm sure that um, you've shared one or two advices, advice when you were speaking. So your parting words to um, existing editors and new editors in one minute, please. 
my parting words is be patient with yourself if you are a new editor. Learn how this project works. Try as much as possible to follow the necessary things. Something as simple as joining the dashboard can render your contribute can render your contribution for that particular project notified if you refuse to do so. So try as much as possible to follow the uh, the required information or uh, instruction. Be patient with yourself and know that it is not every project you must be part of. Find the ones that align with your interests. And just like uh, the other participant has said, stay curious. You don't have to be in a particular place, in a particular field for you to participate. It, it gives you a learning. The Wikimedia project gives you a learning uh, avenue. So that's what I can just say. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, um, Thorida. She said that we should find a niche and stay and remain consistent in it. So um, I'd like to ask uh, our audience if you have any question for our speakers. Is there any question you'd like to ask any of the speakers? Maybe they said something that, you know, that was inspiring to you or that you have a question about, please kindly unmute your mic and speak or use the chat box. Right, um, with the silence, I would assume that um, nobody has any question. So thank you to um, every participant that came up for today's webinar. And thank you to all of our speakers. I enjoyed listening to every one of you. Um, thank you for the encouragement. And thank you for, again, for honoring our, our invitation. I look forward to you know, hearing from you guys again with the so much impacts that you, you would have created in the Wikimedia space. So thank you everyone for coming to today's meeting. We have come to the end of this month's webinar. Thank you. Thank you.